Good morning everyone and thank you for tuning in. Today um, we'll be talking about the blood supply of the hand. Um, my name is Rose Clark and I'm a final year medical student at the University of Notre Dame. So first of all I thought we could start by talking about um, just the main blood supply that will come from the forearm and into the hand. So if you think about it you've got the radial a brachial artery which will be dividing into the radial artery and then the ulnar artery. These will be our main blood supplies um, to our hand that we'll go into more detail about. So yeah, those, those main arteries. So in terms of the ulnar artery, this is the main uh, blood supply um, and main arterial supply of the hand. So what happens when you have the ulnar artery, it comes down following the ulnar bone along here and it enters the hand in, uh, anteriorly into the flexor retinaculum at the Guyon Canal, so the um, ulnar area. And it goes between the pisiform and the hook of the hamate. It's the pisiform and this is the hook of the hamate. It's actually lateral to the ulnar nerve, which comes along the outside here. It then divides into two terminal branches, which we'll go through in a lot of details coming up, about the deep palmar arch and the superficial palmar arch. These then have um, their own separate branches, which will supply the rest of the, um, the fingers and the rest of the hand. So with the superficial palmar arch, um, the main blood supply for this is actually from the ulnar artery. So what happens with the superficial palmar arch, as you can see through the diagram here on the right, um, the superficial palmar arch can then separate and go into three common digital arteries, as you can see going along the digits 2, 3 and 4, and then also divides off into the ulnar digital artery of the fifth digit, so the little finger, so it has its own little branch there. These are very important and it's the main blood supplies all coming from the ulnar artery. In terms of the digital arteries, as we've just gone through, so it comes off the superficial branch, as we've just said, there's also a bit of an anastomosis coming from the, um, the, the deep palmar arch, which we'll go through in the next few slides. Um, so there's a bit of anastomosis there for the palmar metacarpal arteries, and then they go down through the metacarpal bones, down into the, um, down into the digits, and they form the proper palmar digital arteries. So as you can see, they supply the medial and the lateral supply of the phalanges. Um, and they don't go on top or the bottom, they go on the sides. When we're talking about this radial artery, so that's the other blood supply from the hand, from the forearm, um, the radial artery enters the hand dorsally, crossing the, crossing the floor of an, an anatomical snuff box. So what you have is the ulna on the medial border, is the tendon of the extensor, flexor, um, sorry, extensor pollicis longus, as you can see here in the diagram. And then on the lateral border, you have the tendons of the extensor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis longus. So these ones form the border of the anatomical snuff box. And through the middle, the contents of the snuff box is the radial artery. And this is how it enters into the hand. What happens then is it enters the palm between the head of the first dorsal interosseous muscle. It turns medially and heads towards the head of the abductor pollicis muscle. So coming through into the hand here. We'll go through the branches next. So in terms of this radial artery, what happens is the um, radial artery forms the superficial palmar arch. So it comes down here, joined into the superficial palmar arch. It also has then a few other branches. So if we're coming along the radial artery, superficial palmar arch comes along, can also then divide into form um, the main arterial supply of the thumb, so called in the princeps pollicis artery. It also then supplies um, a branch to the index finger, which is the radialis indices artery. It can also then become part of the deep, it continues along to the deep palmar arch, which is the predominant artery of the deep, um, prominent supply of the deep palmar arch. Okay, so when we're now following this deep palmar arch, so we've got the superficial we've already been through, being from the ulnar artery, and now we're talking about the deep palmar arch, which is down again further. Um, for, uh, further posteriorly into the hand. So as we've said, it comes majority from the radial artery. It forms three branches and goes into three palmar metacarpal arteries, which come along the metacarpal bones along here. As we've talked about, these will then become the branches of um, the digital arteries from the superficial branch as well, forming the proper digital arteries. So that's the main blood supply of the hand. But what's really important, as you can see, is this modified Allen's test. So clinically, when you're trying to use um, this test in practice, you need to know whether the hand has ad adequate collateral supply. 
if you're going to be doing an, um, you know, um, an ABG from the radial artery, you need to make sure that if you if you ever thrombose the radial artery, that you have enough collateral supply from the ulnar artery, that the hand will still have sufficient blood supply. So what you can do is it's called this modified Allen's test. Um, and you get the patient to clench their fist, um, and then you can occlude both of the radial and the ulnar artery at the wrist. You can hold that for like 30 seconds, and then once you, what you do is you release the ulnar artery. And you'll see within fi 5 to 15 seconds, you should see the hand from what's now gone white, should now turn um, the ready, ready coloration from the perfusion re, um, recirculating through the hand. Within 5 to 15 seconds, if it hasn't gone red, um, you can know that there's not enough adequate supply from the ulnar artery through this superficial branch to be able to supply to the fingers of the hand. Therefore, you're really at threat if you're going to do a radial, radial um, like an ABG to the, to the hand or um, a radial blood uh, test. Um, that way, you won't have enough supply to the hand. And then, just lastly, what well, the most important thing is, um, is just following the veins. So the veins follow the arteries. So from the palmar veins, which have been through, they just follow um, the, the palmar branches. So you have the superficial palmar arch and the deep venous palmar arch. In terms of the dorsal veins, they drain to the, the cephalic and the basilic veins. So they're much more simpler. They have the digital veins coming from the fingers. They then join into the metacarpal veins and then the dorsal venous network, which all just supplies back to the cephalic and the um, basilic veins. So the blood supply of the hand is pretty straightforward, um, but the main things you need to know is that the main artery supply of the hand is from the old nerve, from the old artery. And what most importantly is make sure you test doing the modified Allen's test, and then get make sure you have collateral supply before you do any clinical um, tests on the hand. Thank you.